Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using AI generated art in patterns inside Adobe Photoshop. The ice creams in this pattern have been created using artificial intelligence. I'm going to show you how to do that and how to use those images in Photoshop. You're going to start with a site that allows you to generate AI images and I'm using Night Cafe. This is a really good site to use and I'm going to step you through it. When you first come into Night Cafe, you'll get five credits. You can earn five credits every day, but you have to come in every day to grab them. You can also get additional credits for voting and challenges and posting to Instagram, for example. But I'm going to assume that you've been here a few times before you get started and you have a few credits to work with. We're going to start with Dal E as our creation method. This is going to give you ice creams of the type that I am showing you here. I'm going to paste in the text prompt that I'm using and I suggest that if you want to get results not dissimilar to mine that you do exactly the same thing. So my prompt is melting ice cream cone, vivid colors, cartoon style, that's all in one sentence so there are no punctuation marks here but there is a comma and then full height. I found that that gives me better results in terms of getting a ice cream that is full height and not cut off. Now I'm going to choose four images so I'm spending three credits on four images and that's all I'm going to do at this stage. We've got the modifiers that we want. You don't need to do anything more than this. You're just going to click to create and here you're going to get your ice cream. So this is going to take a little while to render, maybe a minute or two. And so you can just watch it happening. So here we can get to view our creations. Now I have got some that have been cut off here. This is not a very good render. I would be pretty disappointed with this. So I'm going to go back and try again. This is one that I might use. So I'm just going to click on it. It looks like it's only cut off at the top. I could potentially create the top for that. So I am going to just download that image just so I can show you what I do. I just put them in a folder. So I've got a whole series of melting ice cream cones. So I'm just going to add this as number 29. But if you're not happy with what you get, you can just go back to create, go back to Dali, go back and paste in your option and try again. Now these are very low resolution. That's all we're paying for because we've got a small number of credits. I don't want to spend a lot of money. These are much better results. So every time you do this, you're going to get a different set of results. You're never going to see exactly the same as I've got here and yours are going to be different to mine. So I'm looking at these. This is the four up. So this is showing us all the four ice creams we got in that rendering. And then I can click here to go and see each individual one and to determine which ones I might want to download. If I want to download that, I'm just going to click on it. We don't want artist overlay because that would be my name on it for a pattern inside Photoshop. That's really not what we're looking for. I'm just calling mine by consecutive numbers so that they're going to be grouped together in the folder. Just click save. This is one I really quite like. I would need to make up the top there. I would need to fix the bottom here. It's pretty easy to do. If you're a dab hand with Photoshop, you'll be able to do that. I'm going to opt today for the pattern that we're going to make for things that are already intact. So this would be a really good option. It's pretty intact. There's very little that would need to be fixed here, if at all. So let me just download that. So I'm going to take a selection of these images that I have created and saved onto my computer and I'm going to use them in Photoshop. So we're going to move across to Photoshop and start work there. So opening up Photoshop, we're going to create a brand new file. If you're using the settings that I used on Night Cafe, then you're creating really small documents. So I'm just going to make my pattern piece 800 by 800 pixels in size. Of course, in future, you could scale your images up or you could buy more expensive, higher resolution images. Just going to bring my ice creams over here because what I'm going to do is choose the ice creams to use. What I'm looking for is a whole ice cream, not one that's cut off that I'd have to do work on. And I'm also looking at ice creams that have sort of the same feel about them. You can see that this one has very thin lines and they're red. And this one has quite thick black lines. So I want things that are going to look okay together on the page. And you might need a few elements to be able to choose from to do that. I'm going to choose this one and I'm just going to drag and drop it into my document. 
and let's go and choose a second one. Now it's coming in at a very large size because of this drag drop process. It actually didn't start off being that big. I kind of like this one too with its background. I'm thinking I can probably get away with it. So let's just drag and drop that one in there as well. Okay. So let's just size them down. They're more happy at about 500 pixels in size. They're not going to be quite as pixelated. I'm just going to size each of these down to where it should be. I noticed that this one at the back has a bit missing off it. Probably would have been better to have chosen something different, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And you could go and tidy this up yourself. I would probably copy a bit of this tip and put it over there. But let's just assume that it was an entire ice cream. I'm going to right click this and just rasterize it so that we don't get into trouble when we're removing backgrounds and things. I've got this top one turned off for now. I'm going to the magic wand tool here. I have my tolerance set to 25. That's going to allow me to click and pretty much remove the background to this shape. I'm pressing select and then deselect or control or command D to deselect my selection once I've actually cleaned it up. I'm just going to put this in the middle of the document, turn its visibility off. Let's go to this next one. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with the magic wand tool. Just get rid of everything that I don't want. Now it's got a bit of sort of cream around it, a bit of area here. Let me just delete it and see if we're going to go a step further. I think I'll leave that for now, but I could take the pink pieces out. It just might take a little bit of time to do it. So these are going to be the two shapes that I'm working with. The bottommost one is just fine. The topmost one we have to throw to the edges of the document. And this is where we're likely to encounter some difficulties with Photoshop. These are in the more recent versions of Photoshop, it's really annoying. So I'm going to show you how to solve it. Let's choose filter and then other and then offset, which is the way that we typically make these patterns. And what we do is we offset it a half the dimension of the document. So the document was 800 pixels by 800 pixels. So we would offset it 400 and 400. And you can see that this is only throwing a piece to this corner. All the other corners are missing and that's not the way it's supposed to work. I'm just going to click OK because I want to show you why. And this is why. You can see when I click away that there's actually sort of more happening here than is actually visible on the screen. So let me just undo that with edit and then undo. And then what we're going to do is go to the crop tool. And the crop tool by default just grabs the outside edge of the document. And you're just going to press enter twice. And what that does is it crops any excess that Photoshop imagines might be there. Not really there, but it imagines it. Let's try that filter again. Filter other offset. And now with our 400, 400, we get a quarter of that ice cream in each corner of the document. So that's just a heads up for not only this pattern, but also any other pattern you try in Photoshop because it tends to do that. So now we have our pattern. So I'm going to choose edit and define pattern. And we're going to call this ice creams. To test it, we'll create a document that is larger with file and new. I'm going to choose something that is sort of scrapbook paper size, 3600 by 3600. Yours could be any size that you like, except that you do want to be working with a document larger than the pattern we just made so you can test it. I'm going to click to turn off the background layer so it's no longer a background layer, it's a layer. Go to the patterns dialog, you can get to that by choosing window and then patterns and I'll click once on my ice cream and here is my ice cream pattern. You can see that we've got two very distinctly different ice creams in this seamless repeating pattern. Now we could come back here and we could add a background. We will notice here that the background right now is white, but we could, for example, sample a color from this image. Let's go and grab this pink, see what it looks like as a background. So I have my background targeted here. I've got the paint bucket tool. That's one way of adding a background. It's a little bit pink and I do have some problems up here. So what I might do is short of fixing those problems is let's just go and get this yellow as our color instead and let's see how that looks. 
Well, that's a much better and much quicker and easier result. We're going to save this as another pattern. So I'll edit define pattern, click OK, go back into our document, double click here and go to the very end of your patterns panel. And here is this second pattern. If we double click on this, we can scale it up. You don't want to scale them up by too much because that would be stretching them and they weren't very high resolution in the first place. Of course, if you wanted to create a more high resolution version of this, you could go back to Night Cafe and buy higher resolution versions of these images. That's perfectly possible as well. But I really do like the concept of creating designs using artificial intelligence and having an AI engine do most of the design work for us, just harnessing our own skills inside Photoshop to create seamless repeats. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.